And if anybody here um, would like to pose a question, you can do so on the chat. I will um, look through the questions and we can definitely pose those questions. And I can read in Spanish and Portuguese and English. So just feel free to write in whatever language you feel comfortable in. Um, so Paula, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, and your background, please? Sure. Thank you, Isa, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. So I'm a Brazilian. Maybe you can notice by my accent, living currently in Buenos Aires. Uh, I've been dedicating to climate action for the past, I don't know, over a decade now. I have a background in international relations and local development. And uh, since one and a half year, I have been mother to Clara, which is part of the, the reason I'm here today. Right. Um, so when your daughter was born, you noticed that there was um, a contradiction between the way we raise children and the environmental problem we're all living in. Can you tell us more about that? Mm -hmm. Sure. And maybe, maybe I can go even a little bit before her birth, because I think many of the things we see in the world go back to our references, right? And um, I was raised in a semi-rural area, a small town in Rio de Janeiro, and my childhood was very much close to nature. We were neighbors to a small forest, and I remember I used to love the regular storms every afternoon on summers, and in the evenings, I would be afraid of stepping on frogs and of finding a snake under my bed. Uh, and when Clara was born and I started to picture what I wanted for her, for her, her childhood and her life, I would picture things like that. Uh, lots of connection to nature and simple things. But um, while this is what I dreamed and wanted for her, uh, this clashed very much with all the information I have regarding climate change to, to my work and everything that we are seeing happening these days. And I know that her childhood will, and her life will be most mostly um, marked by screens, plastics, and not so much connection to nature as I would wish. And probably her fears will be a little bit more complex than finding a snake under her bed. And nowadays we're gonna see it will involve pandemics, natural disasters, maybe fears of not having access to water or food security. So these are the challenges that we are unfortunately going to face in the future and that our children are gonna face. And the crazy thing, the big contradiction, is that while this is not what I want, or I'm sure uh, most of the people who have children in their life want for, for them, our actions, everyday actions, economic and political ones, are the ones taking us in that direction, fueling this uh, environmental crisis that is gonna face the future. And all this became very clear to me uh, still during pregnancy and while on her first months when I started receiving a lot of presents. And I have to say it was beautiful. Right. Um, I had, I counted and there were over 70 people close and far away sending me all types of gifts. Uh, but many of them were, came uh, with plastic packaging or were made out of plastic and I couldn't avoid thinking, whoa, she's not even three months and she has already a huge environmental impact. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, I, um, at the same time, I realized that this was an important force. Was yeah, an Paula Ellinger. Yeah, Paula. Paula. Yes. Uh, if I don't know. we could mute our mics, if we're not speaking, that'd be great. Si pueden colocar micrófono en mudo, si no estamos hablando sería genial. So Paula, you were saying that your your daughter, already yeah. three months old, had an, a huge environmental impact. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I knew that all this would grow 
uh, as her birthdays came and all the parties and all her demand of toys that she would see on TV and so on. And I started looking at numbers and I figured out that the toys industry is much bigger than I could ever have thought of. Um, actually, the toys industry is growing five times faster than the world's children population around 40% a year, around 40% on the past four years between actually 2014 and 2018. Uh, and estimates suggest that 90% of the toys are made out of plastic. So we're thinking of children are growing at the rate of 2.5% more or less in terms of population, but toys are growing around 40% and 14%. And 90% of these toys are made out of plastic. And it's not only about the amount of uh, trash that we are generating and that will be around for, for many decades, but also about the money, about the financial resources we are investing in that. If we go to the numbers, the toys industry, the toy sales reached in 2018 around 90 billion dollars in sales. For those who are in the climate change world, we know this is, the, this is close to the number that developing countries are asking developed countries to solve climate change annually. So uh, what if all the money we are investing in toys could be directed towards solving climate change? That is the, the, the opportunity I saw in this big contradiction and uh, inspired with Sunny and support of Betu and, and Bingo Larti to, to start Kurumi. Right. And, and how, do you, um, how do you see Kurumi um, addressing this problem and turning into an opportunity? Yeah, so what we, what we want to do is to create alternatives uh, for showing love and giving gifts for children that do not have such a negative environmental impact. But not only that they don't have a negative impact, but also have a positive one and contribute to restoring the planet and the future that uh, we, want, we really wish and want to live for our children. And in that sense, what we are looking for is to build bridges between children and people who want to give gifts for children with uh, those who are the real guardians of nature and forests and of um, the, the future of our planet, which are indigenous peoples. We are thinking of different ways of making this connection, of bringing, building bridges between children and indigenous people. And uh, we are thinking that this can happen in material and unmaterial ways, both through uh, co-designing with indigenous people products like toys based on their art crafts and knowledge uh, and also um, thinking about unmaterial ways of uh, bringing, build, building this bridge through stories, ebooks, um, digital content and other ways. So what we are working in Kurumi is on different alternatives to being, build the bridges between children and indigenous people. Great. That's, that's, very, that's very fascinating and, and I think it's very timely for sure. Um, could you tell us a bit more about where and with what actions did you decide to start? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, by the end of the year this was all very conceptual. So we were doing research, looking at numbers, and then at the beginning of this year we decided to, to go to practice. And, then in conversations with Beto from Forest Trends and Chris, who is also here with us today from Vincularte, we identified that a good opportunity would be to start in the Chaco, uh, in the Chaco forest, and we will talk more about it, but it's the second largest forest in Latin America. Uh, and specifically with the Wichi people who face a lot of uh, social and economic challenges. So we went into a field trip to Salta and we met amazing artisans and we came back very inspired to start uh, working on, on our idea of building ways to make gifts for children that also support indigenous people. But then came the pandemic 
And then we decided, okay, there's no way to continue on going on field trips and doing some work together. And we had, we had a choice. We could either stop and postpone plan, plans for once the COVID-19 um, pandemic gets over, or uh, we could start exploring ways to do it virtually. And we decided to pick the second row, road, and I'm very happy we did that because now the context is showing that um, actually the, the opportunity is increasing and is becoming bigger because um, with the pandemic, the, the people from South Adewichi communities, they are losing an important uh, source of income because tourism is not arriving anymore. And many of the families that depended on selling art crafts for their livelihoods are facing a, another and stronger uh, economic um, limitation. And at the same time, we are also seeing that uh, the demand for toys and the toy sales are increasing worldwide due to the quarantine and kids being at home with parents with um, all the challenge that this represents for families, uh, sales of toys are, is increasing in the past months. So I'm happy we, we decided to pick this road. And uh, so the first thing we did was to write a, a, a book, a book of activities based on what we learned about the Ouichi people uh, for children from all over the world. We did it in three languages. Sunny will share more about that. And also start working through WhatsApp and cell phone and the, the way we can with um, representatives from these communities on what other things can we do together? So I think that's it uh, that's on great. what we have done so far. Yeah, it, it seems like in the end, it was uh, the quarantine presented a, a good opportunity to connect with children on these issues since they're home with their parents. So I think that's, yeah, it's a, a blessing in disguise. Um, Beto, um, if you could tell us a bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm Beto, Beto Borges. I'm also Brazilian, so, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm here in California. I've been here for, for many years, and I've been working with indigenous peoples and other local communities for the past 35 years or so, uh, mostly uh, in the Brazilian Amazon, but elsewhere, elsewhere in Latin America as well. For the past 15 years, I've been running um, the Communities and Territorial Governance Initiative at Forest Trends. And um, we, the goal of our work or the niche of the work that we do is really to support indigenous, uh, what we call indigenous territorial governance, or what is known as indigenous territorial governance. And from, the, from three uh, pillars or three areas of work, uh, um, supporting advocacy efforts of indigenous peoples, be either in uh, evolving or existing policies, so that policies um, seek to do no harm, or and and hopefully uh, that there are uh, shares of benefits of uh, the policy framework towards indigenous peoples, um, as well as uh, work. Um, we work also with uh, promoting um, indigenous. Uh, economic self-determination, um, seeking to strike the right balance between the traditional economies or the economy of reciprocity uh, with the market economy so that the later does not uh, undermine the, their traditional economies. And the third uh, area of work that we do is uh, support indigenous culture uh, in what we call uh, cultural integrity. Uh, supporting their cultural traditions. So uh, related to, to children and, and culture and Kurumi, uh, one, one, one of the things that I find it very, very inspiring is it's the heritage, the cultural heritage of, that indigenous peoples have. Once I heard by an indigenous youth actually that told me, it's a battle, uh, indigenous peoples without a culture, culture uh, are not indigenous peoples. So, um, and that's the work that I've been doing over the years, working with um, our indigenous friends and partners um, in Latin America uh, in order to support their rights, uh, their livelihoods in the forests, uh, which is their, their homes. 
Great, thank you for the intro. Um, so why are Indigenous people key allies in creating a different and better future for our children? I don't know about you guys. I would say, I would think that uh, you have a similar feeling that I have, you know, through the, the pandemics, um, maybe through the course of the pandemic, I've been hearing, and I'm really tired of hearing that, oh, it's, can't wait to, to, to go back to, to normal or others are thinking of the new normal. And to me, what, what we had before wasn't normal to begin with. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not interested in a new normal. I'm in, interested in a new paradigm, uh, a new form of, of us relating to the world around us. And indigenous peoples are uh, a source of inspiration. They're a source of knowledge their source of, um, of, of, uh, of ways in which we can organize ourselves uh, as, as societies. So that uh, some of the values that we have lost, Western society, that I believe, uh, and I'm not, uh, I hope that, I, that I'm not making a generalization because there, there's always exceptions, but there is a mass culture that is imposed by the, the, by the media and other the industry and, and other ways of uh, sort of trying to uh, uh, brainwash uh, people towards one set of one way of living, way uh, a way that has actually been destroying with, uh, nature. The pandemic is a result of that so-called normal, and I think what we what indigenous peoples can be a strong ally in creating a new future. Call it uh, the the new era or, or, uh, or I'm not even sure what we're going to call it, but it's, but I, but I, I know what it has to be like uh, you all, I believe we all have in our, in our hearts, in our minds, uh, a new way, a new way of living in this planet that can be sustained because the carrying capacity of uh, humanity has, has gone beyond the, the, the limit. And that's something that we can learn from indigenous peoples. They have uh, also things that they can learn from us, but I, I, I believe that we have as much, if not more, uh, to learn from indigenous people than they have to learn from us. Think, for right. instance, how to relate to elders and, to, and, and, and treat their children. Right. It's, it's creating a new era of awareness, almost, right? Pretty Definitely. much, yes. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. there's a word that uh, I'm just escaping a word about... Um, Oh, yes, the era of Aquarius. Could that be the era of Aquarius that we are going into? I hope so. Maybe, yeah. Uh, great. Um, and how can we leverage the demand for toys um, and accessories for children to, so that we can become allies for indigenous peoples and their efforts to conserve their forests? Yeah, that's that's a, a, a good question. Uh, I think it can be uh, as complex as detailed, but uh, and yet as simple as we as we want it to be. And I think there are the, um, we can go deep into uh, as days go in, in, into this new era. How can we really transform the toy industry, and for that matter, the uh, industry as a whole, so that it has. Um, you know, a, 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 a sound impact on Earth. I was, um, there is a background noise. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I was reviewing a report, a recent report by the International Development Bank, IDB. And there are some very scary facts that if you look at it, uh, according to IDB, um, by 2030, 2030, the, speaking of, of, in terms of Latin America, uh, the growth, the demand for for exports um, will be uh, in in the realm of eight hundred billion dollars, eight hundred billion dollars, uh, with an expectation of uh, fifty one percent growth in uh, uh, fifty one percent of the population, according to IDB, will, will grow into the middle class, which represents uh, an increase in in demand of about. $900 billion in consumption. So $100 billion more will be consumed in Latin America than will be exported by Latin America. 
and as Paula was saying, the, you know, some of the, the, the facts in, uh, uh, related to the, the, the economics uh, of the, the toy industry, and a lot of that industry is unsustainable, as a lot of the industry in many different sectors. Uh, so the impact uh, is, it, it can be tragic if nothing, if, if, if there are no uh, substantial changes in terms of the, reducing the impact of the industry as a whole. One of, one of the ways is to transform, and I think this is one of the, the messages and the, the, the objectives and the goals of Kurumi, is really to transform not only uh, the, the value chain of the, the toy industry, but also um, the, the concept and the practice of gift giving. You know, can we give gifts as an experience rather than a plastic toy? Can we uh, improve the relationships? And I, I'm a father of four. They're all, all grown up today. Well, my daughter is 19, thinking she's 35. But um, can we transform our relationship to our children so that we are closer? Can society give us the opportunity so that we can be closer to our children? Um, and when we think of indigenous peoples, back to your first question and the, and the connections of the of the the toy industry as it is, um, with the impact that it can cause in, in, in thinking of this, this data from the from IDB, 50%, uh, well, it, it's a known fact that 20% of uh, greenhouse gas emissions come from tropical deforestation. And 50% of tropical forests are in Latin America, 25% of which are in, are uh, in the hands of indigenous peoples. Indigenous peoples are stewards of, 20, of a quarter of the forests of Latin America. In the Amazon alone, we have uh, 210 million hectares of, in, of, of forests in the hands of indigenous peoples, traditionally over years after years, which relates to 50 gigatons of carbon um, dioxide emissions that are avoided because of this stewardship. So how can then the toy industry, through a tr transformation of the toy industry, and I, and I make the case for, the, for industry as a whole, for our way to, to, to live on this planet, be less impactful and promote the conservation of forests, promote economic incentives uh, to indigenous people's economies so that they are no longer vulnerable to the unsound forces of, of development, of economic development that are encroaching upon their lands you just look at the paper, uh, deforestation is, is, is growing all over the, uh, Latin America. So how can we then create incentives, economic incentives, that uh, can be an instrument to decrease the vulnerability of indigenous peoples to forest destruction and provide incentives for forest conservation? I think that's, to me, one of the most important things that we, we can do in this, in this partnership with indigenous peoples. And I would, I think it, it should, if we can have the toy industry as an ally, um, reducing their impact, imp improving their profits, it's possible. And yet conserving uh, forests and, 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 and the heritage, culture, cultural heritage of indigenous peoples, uh, I think that's part of the new era that we're talking about. Right. Yeah, uh, that's, I think that's really, um... That's really great insight, Beto. Thank you for sharing that. Um, if uh, we could introduce Sani. Um, Sani, if you could tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Sani, Sani Plurwin. I am a designer, a product designer and a graphic designer. And I am specialized in design for sustainability by the Geese Foundation. And I used to work in the big industries and doing products and putting products in the world. And this, to run away from that, I started to, to make an academic, I started to learn a little bit about consumption and about toys. And then I specialized in childhood and enrollment based on the Montessori method. So this is when I, when me and Paula started to develop Kurumi, and now we're here, so this is a little bit about me. And I want to talk a little bit. Uh, 
about this eager that I think that we need to to change our behavior of consumption that we are consuming this is obvious everybody sees but the problem here that I see is what we are consuming so this is this is why I stopped a little bit putting products in the world and changed a little bit to child development and education so this is a little bit about me I think we need more people like you in, in the market today. Thank you for making that change. Um, Sunny, so uh, Paula told us a bit about um, the Wichi community. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on, uh, on why uh, Kurumi chose to work in El Chaco with the Wichi. Okay, so first I want to talk a little bit about the Chaco region. The Chaco is actually the second largest forest in South America in biodiversity and size. The first one is the Amazon. And different from the Amazon that is moist, the Chaco region is semi-arid. So it's the biggest dry forest in South America. And it's mostly in Argentina. And the province of Salta is a region there where where they are the largest population of indigenous people live in the province of Salta and mostly most of them are Vichy and this region is suffering from the biggest deforestation in Argentina so it is very drastically what has happened there year after years and every day we hear the same the same news that the Vichy communities and other communities that live in the region are suffering from dehydration and children are dying from hunger. So they need their forests for their livelihoods. They live from the art and crafts that they sell. So it's really important for them to keep their forests standing and to give them a better, uh, better chance and a better possibilities for work so that they can live a better life and so that we also can live because with their forest standing they can that what Beto said and what Paula said a little bit this is the intuition from Kurumi so we seek that to help a little bit and to broadcast their culture to broadcast their handicrafts and their millionaires techniques that they do their arts and crafts so that we can help them and to create this awareness for people that it is important to preserve the forests. Great. A little bit about the Vichy, yeah. 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 Um, can you tell us about how design can connect children and indigenous people? So we made a field trip, me and Paula, this February to this region. So we met a few of the communities and there we observed uh, their products, we observed a little bit the, the materials that they use, the natural fibers, the different types of woods that they have from the forest, some natural paint and ceramics. And together with that, we saw the beautiful arts and crafts that they already made in different sizes, in different forms. And so our idea was to help them to co-design actually products that were able for the children market. So this is an opportunity not only to develop a new niche that we know that people are consuming, like Paula said, the toy market is growing every year more and more, but also to broadcast a little bit their culture and their origin. So the idea was to co-design not only maybe a spoon for a baby to eat, but also to bring in it a little bit of the Vichy motive, maybe bring some animals from the Chaco region or bring a different type of tree that maybe children from the city are not used to see. So the idea was to create product not only made by the hands of, uh, of the vast Vichy culture, but also to bring a little bit to shorten that distance between a child in the city and a child in the Vichy community. So this is, was our idea. And it's important to say here that our process that Kurumi seeks is a circular design process based on the circular economy. So different than 
the linear process that we are used to, that we earned from the Industrial Revolution, that extracts, produces, distributes, and discards it. We know that discard is actually next door, so they are discarding in landfill areas. So this is not a profit. So the the circular economy it doesn't have an end. The end is a new beginning. So it is a circular process. There's more to it, but this is for another time. And so what is good about the Vichy product and why do we want it to work with their arts and crafts? Not only because they use sustainable and compostable material, but also when they are extracting those materials, they are not harming the forest. They are, they are living in harmony with the forests. And further than that, if you don't want the wooden spoon anymore, you can dig a hole in your backyard and you put that in, in a few years, it won't be there and different than a plastic toy that if you dig it in, maybe the grandchildren of your baby children will still dig it out and play with it. So this is not, so the Kudumi philosophy seeks this circular economy. It's basically leave a positive balance behind, like a tree, for example, when it loses their, their leaves, the leaf will serve as nutrition so that the tree can grow again and gain another leaf next year. So this is a little bit about the Kurumi process and philosophy about the products. Great, yeah, it, it's so important to talk about the circular economy um, and there's different shades of it, but that's for another webinar for sure. And like you said, uh, the plastic doesn't degrade, it's actually toxic, right? So you wouldn't want your grandchildren playing with that anyway. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for that explanation. Um, could you uh, tell me about what you've done since the idea was, uh, was first born? Ah, okay, because of what, a little bit about uh, what Paula said about the pandemic context, uh, we started with an online version of an activity book for kids. I printed one so that I can show you all in recycled papers <laughs> and it's a little bit, this book is a journey from Saul and Nino. Saul and Nino are our small characters that we developed. So they are making a journey in, uh, through a Vichy community and there they learn a, bit, a little bit about not only the environment, but about their culture and about some, what they eat and about how they do their arts and crafts. And in the middle, you have some fun games to play with your kid at home. So at the same time, you're learning and having fun. And we inserted some QR codes where you can access some Vichy tales or where you can learn a little bit about the process from a fiber that they extract in the forest, like the Chagua fiber. And this book is accessible online and for free in our website that we are also launching today, the kudumi.global. Sorry, Sunny, I think the there was a presentation because I, I, I saw it briefly. I don't see it on the screen anymore. Could you share that again? About the book? Yeah, oh, was there yes. a presentation? Uh, what I wanted, yes, what I wanted to show is, is a little bit uh, our website that we are launching today as well. So there you can download the activity book. And further than that, we are inviting people to help in other forms as well, not only the Vichy communities, but other communities. So we have partnership with other organizations that you can access through our website to see uh, what they do and how they help the Vichy community. So you can contact them and help them directly through our website. Another big partnership of ours that Paula already com commented is Vinculate. So Vinculate is a store, a physical store in the region of Salta that already sells arts and crafts made by Vichy, made by Vichy communities, not only Vichy communities, but all other commu indigenous communities and native communities that live in the region. So when we started seeing their products, we saw that they already ma make some products that are perfect for kids. So we are recommending some products from Vinculate that you can see a little bit here in the web that like a mobile for kids or some paintings. 
and you can access them directly through our website or the Vincularte e-store. And the Vincularte e-store has a special section for kids that in the future we, we want to, if you can see the puzzle with the animals from the Chaco, uh, this is very good. And so the Vincularte, they will have a special section for kids and in the future we will offer some Kurumi products. So this is why we are launching today as well our crowdfunding campaign. So our campaign aims to ask for some help so that we can make co-design actually a collection with, the, with some Vichy communities and have that collection for December so that people that are interested in this kind of product while you are at the same time giving a present and caring for the planet so that we can launch it on for Christmas to start giving future as a present. This is our slogan. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. I, I think I think it's going to be it's going to be a lot of demand for that, especially for this, this Christmas. So, um, great. Is there anything else, uh, Paula, Beto, or Sani, you want to add before we open up to Q and A? Yes, actually, mm -hmm. I want to add. I want to leave here with a quote from one of our great minds, from Einstein that he said, you cannot solve a problem from the same mentality that created it. So let's think different and make the change for the next generations. Right, exactly. Raising awareness and, and changing mindsets. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sunny. Um, so if, if anyone has any questions, uh, we could... Uh, yes, Pato. Very quickly, I, I just want to say that uh, Vincolart is one of the uh, you know the companies that we are working with also uh, we haven't yet um, chosen the date uh, we are considering probably in October there will be a, a live presentation in Portuguese uh, also about Kurumi there's going to be one in Spanish I believe uh, I'm pretty sure it's Friday uh, it's this Friday and um, also um, we work um, in this partnership that Forest Trends has with Kurumi uh, we're also working with um, Tucum in Brazil. Uh, this is a Tucum Arte Indígena, and, uh, and and through which we are supporting several um, indigenous um, art and an artisan cooperatives, uh, especially led by women. Um, so um, so stay tuned. Uh, so there are other ways also that we're connecting to other indigenous communities beyond the Chaco. Although we, for the reasons that have been already described we chose the Chaco uh, to, to work with, but um, for, for now, as a start, but also we are all, for the strands, we're working with other uh, indigenous communities elsewhere um, in the region, in Latin America as well. Thank you, Beto. I just shared the link to Tukum website, if anyone is interested in checking it out. Great. And uh, this may be Paula or Sani can share the link also to Kurumi. Thank you, Lisa. Um, if if I may also jump in to share a little bit of, I think one of the important principles of our work is uh, collaboration and co-design and building partnerships because the, the size of the challenge we have ahead is huge and I think it's only gonna be possible to do transformation if we act together. So uh, on one hand, invite everyone that's watching if you have either ideas of products, activities, what we can do to build these bridges between children and indigenous people. We are most welcome to, to get them and to work together. Uh, and also with other stores or companies or social enterprises that are already working in this direction because uh, we, while we do want to co-design, uh, we, we do also want to, to suggest and recommend uh, other ways of um, breaking this paradigm of the way we are directing children's consumption today towards plastic, right? And in that sense, uh, regarding the, our co-design um, track of work, just to share a little bit of what we are thinking ahead uh, of 
as Sunny mentioned, we are we are launching a crowdfunding campaign to co-design some products. We have some ideas already. Uh, for example, we are we're thinking of taking working with the painters that you see the illustrations in the book to to make a, a puzzle and um, memory card game. Uh, also with Chaguar and Palo Santo Wood, Wood that are key um, resources from the region, we are thinking of designing um, some products for, for, for children that are related to developing motor coordination skills in early ages. And uh, I think the most important thing is besides the ideas we bring and we, we, we work together with the local partners, we are also receiving some feedback and ideas from them. So just to share, for example, yesterday I, I received a phone call from one of the artisans we met uh, in Salta and he started creating uh, uh, some de decoration figures for children's rooms with a uh, characters from their uh, local stories that is the woman woman moon and the um, star man and so this is also one of the things we are looking forward to 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 think of different toys and decoration and accessories for kids that we are that are not in our mindsets today but that come either from different people that we interact with or from the communities themselves Thank you, Paula. I think um, you might have answered Angela's question. She's asking, are you developing products and activities for what ages? So you said early, early stage, approximately what range? Um, Sunny, we cannot hear you. Sorry, it was noisy outside, so I mute. Uh, our intention here is to have, since uh, I studied a little bit the Montessori method, where the idea is to give the child toys and things they can interact with that will help their enrollment. So the, the idea here is to co-create with the communities those kinds of toys and those kinds of design so that you are not making only a toy that they can play with, but they, they can also learn. So this is our idea. So the ages will be from zero to, from newborn to six or 10. Some puzzles that are a little bit trickier can be for more older children, but we are focusing on the first childhood. Right, so from zero, zero to six, and then six to 10. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone else have a question? You could post it here in the chat, or I see Leslie, if you, uh, Leslie Kikoler, uh, if you can unmute yourself, we can hear your question. The mute is on the bottom left corner. Tem um microfone embaixo. Não? Não? Ok. Ok, hello everyone. Everyone, my name is Leslie Kikoler from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I know Sunny since she was unborn. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I have two questions and one proposal. One question is, do we have any kind of Brazilian uh, official support, financial support for bringing these products to Brazil or showcasing them in Brazil? Uh, but most important of all, I, I was almost all my life, I was a toy producer. I had a toy industry, of course, in plastic but was uh, educational toys, toys to assemble. Uh, now I am retired, but I am very much uh, in love with this idea. What I would like to propose is next year, I am a director of institution in the 
the Zona Sul in the South Zone of Rio de Janeiro, and I would like very much to propose an exposition and a selling point to these products here in Rio de Janeiro soon after the pandemic. I don't know if this goes, uh, if this interests you. Uh, it's on a high level, high class section of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it's a Jewish institution with a rabbi, which is a very open mind rabbi. And I certainly, we have a building, a three stories high building, which we could build up a huge exposition and selling points of this Indian toys here in Rio. As a, as a showroom and a showcase and, and to bring in people to talk about this. I don't know if, if this would be your interest, but I'm willing to help. Super. I am retired and I'm looking for something in this direction to help a better world. Sani, I think you're on mute. I'll hear you. Yeah, thank you, Leslie. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Leslie, for participating and for accompanying me all these years. And uh, first of all, we're really interested. We are. We really think that co-working and co-designing and any help we can get, we want the more the may, the may <laughs> how many people are involved in this project. So we will. We are very interested in that proposition, and we would be delighted to do it. So. Of course. And oh, everyone else, if you have something, an idea or something you want to help as well. So we are open to any possibilities to talk about it. And that's it. Kurumi seeks to co-create and expand this awareness and this idea. So we are open to. Sunny, I would like very much on the, on the possible next opportunity, perhaps in Teresopolis, perhaps in Rio after the, the, the pandemic, I would like to, 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 to talk with you because I have some ideas on mine and I would like to help very much. Okay? You're very welcome. And I believe that my daughter, Bianca, which you know very much, very well, you know her very well, I believe she will be in, uh, enlightened to to participate in this project. I'm it's sure she will. something that she is very much concerned about, and uh, I think we could help a lot, okay? And Thanks congratulations so for this project, okay? All the best, congratulations for all of you. Thanks, Leisha. Great, uh, does anyone else have any uh, questions or? Hi, hello. This is Juliana, Juliana Tinoco from Rio and actually from Sao Paulo now. Uh, congratulations. We've been following, following the work um, from Paulo and Sunny for a long time now, and this is an amazing project. Um, I, I have like two broad questions that maybe we can explore quickly if we still have time. The first one would be regarding cultural aspects of this um, interaction with indigenous communities and how, how, how are you planning or thinking what's been the main reflection on how to safeguard um, uh, the main cultural aspects of their work uh, when it comes to the design itself of the products that you, you, you've been thinking about. And the second one has to do with the environmental uh, aspect or component of this project and how has been that reflection in terms of how to, to, make, to make sure that um, the products that you will be proposing to the kids will make the link with forest protection itself. How do we do you develop this sort of governance mechanism within the communities that we've been working with and that this partnership arrangement has been this reflection for this specific project. And again, congratulations, amazing, amazing work. Thank you very much, to, um, Juliana. Maybe I can start answering and Sunny and Beth, I'm sure they, they can both bring a lot of uh, inputs and criteria to the table. 
I think both questions are very important because uh, as we know many times the intentions are very good but if we don't have the right governance mechanisms in practice they can easily turn into something that's not what we are willing for. In terms of the environmental um, aspect we are, it's all on the, under development, so our ideas are also welcome on how to better approach that. But for example, in terms of environmental impact, one of the communities where we are working with uh, in Salta, uh, from Comunidad de los Valdes, there's some more information on our website, they are already certified by the national government in Argentina for using, for the type of wood they choose to use. So they use Palo Santo wood, but they use um the what they call the campana wood which is from the trees that have already fallen to the ground and that are even better for art crafts and that's already certified by the national government in argentina we know that certification schemes are very costly and that uh, it's not going to be possible to work with that in all cases so i think that's that's one thing we're going to have to to face and, and define depending on each community we work with um, in other cases, for example, with the, the painters we were working with, then um, there's not an, an env direct environmental uh, impact on the use of natural resources, but we are going to uh, decide to work with companies that, for example, can produce the puzzles and the memory cards with um, recycled paper and well, with all the standards that we can find on the market. So I think that's a very important question, but we're gonna have to tackle that community by community and product by product, because I think that's not one um, easy answer. Uh, and maybe Sunny and Beto, if you wanna complement also on the cultural aspects of the co-design process. So as I was saying before about the circular economy process, it's actually very broadcast. It's actually much more to this so the idea here is to analyze each phase of the product and make it a more sustainable and cleaner product so this is about the process that we that we want to use and further than that each product we try to bring a little bit of the culture like i said before so the motives of each product are for children but they would our intention is to bring a little bit their culture into their products, not only made by them, but the motives and the playing and everything that we can, we will, we will make the product much more their face than for the children in the city. So we want it to be actually basically designed by them but with a little help because the children market it also has other issues like safety and etc that are really important as well and non-toxic materials so this is will be really a challenge but like paula said we have to see product per product and see each community individually because in spite of being Vichy communities, each community has their unique arts and crafts and their unique source that they can depend on on the forest. So we have to see each product individually. But while offering this, pro this product, we want to give out the information, the most information that we have. And this is a, a goal that we have in our process. So this is really important. and. We will we are thinking of those things yeah thank you paula and, and sunny if i may add a couple words on this question too Oi, hi, son. and uh good question yeah i think this is all the both the cultural and environmental impact of um of anything right that is that is brought forth uh, to indigenous communities need to be taken into account uh very carefully um in um like i, I briefly referred to so the in, intersect between the their traditional economies and the, the market economy so that in this case you know bringing uh products that are made by indigenous peoples to the market economy and as things scale um not only it could uh be a, a cultural impact as well as uh, an environmental impact depending on the products uh, um, one thing that uh, we've been talking a lot and uh, one, one of the reasons why 
uh, we, uh, when Paula first approached me, right, Paula, on this idea of, of Kurumi, this now reality of Kurumi, um, we've been um, discussing how can we, uh, what can we do in order to prevent or minimize uh, uh, the adverse impacts, the cultural and, and environmental adverse, potential, potential adverse impacts. Um, one way that we do, uh, and we've been doing this work for, for a number of years, the Communities Program at Forest Strands, we are working with indigenous peoples just with this program uh, for, for 20 years. And, um, and one way that we do this, this, this work to minimize potential cultural and environmental impact is by co-design, co-participation from the very beginning. Because, um, you know, I've heard, for instance, you know, um, I mean, uh, well, we already, uh, he's already shared Tukum. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Tukum, the work that Tukum does in Brazil. And I've heard, um, you know, some donors and others uh, question about, well, you know, uh, I think it was USA, if anybody from USA here, forgive me for bringing this up, but a question about what about the involvement of children, you know, um, in, the, um, in producing toys was just a, uh, Sort of this Western concern that getting kids involved uh, in producing, which could be construed as a cultural impact, right? To what extent are kids really involved in the production of toys or 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 artisan pro products? In the case of that, I run into questioning, serious questioning uh, related to uh, the work we were doing at the community level. But uh, I think it's uh, in this construct, in this reflection, it's important for us to um, really understand the social structure of the communities that we work with, the ways in which uh, tradi uh, uh, traditional decisions are made and what, um, in, in, in the case of involving children um, with a specific example, not necessarily toys, but uh, the indigenous women we work with in, in the case of Brazil, they, they they're involve their kids from a very early age and their kids are there making beads, making um, necklaces and, and so oh, it's child labor, you know, from, from one worldview, it's child labor, but from, from an indigenous uh, uh, tradition, it's, uh, it's reality, you know, from a very early stage, learning how to, um, to, to embrace their culture in the case of uh, arts, uh, and uh, I, just, I had a similar experience with a, an indigenous youth that told me that, Beth, I'm not interested at all in, in cell phones and technology. What I really want to learn is how to make headdresses. That's what, we, what I think is really cool. So I think uh, it's a very important question that needs to be always taken into account, but also within um, really this, this um, participatory process that, you know, we, we work through these this issues. We, we, we question, for instance, uh, part of the work that we do, what is really the value of money when we talk about the production uh, in, in relation to the potential cultural impact? What is really the value of money? And uh, what we want to promote uh, is uh, a, 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 an understanding of money, the value of money that actually contributes to the whole uh, culture, to the, to the integrated territorial governance approach rather just uh, for, uh, you know, increase the capacity of purchasing things. So, I, you know, this is um, an open question. It's a really, thank you so much for asking this question. And uh, you're welcome to help us uh, keep thinking through it and, and everybody here. And again, thank you so much for your participation. Great. Um, I think we might have time for one more question. Does anyone or or share a comment? Okay. Um, then I think we're ready to, to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please uh, stay tuned and we'll definitely share the details of our, our crowdfunding campaign and any new developments. Uh, Carolina Fonseca just raised her hand. Oh, or, or saying goodbye, I can't tell. But thank, thank you, everyone. We are clapping hands, actually. Oh, ah, clapping <laughs> hands, okay, yes. Thanks all, have a great day. Thank you.
Thank you all so much. Many blessings. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. I know.